This is the video that you guys have been waiting for, the highest end i9-5600M MacBook compared to the new beast, the M1 Max with 32 gigs of RAM. Today, we're skipping all the comparisons. We did that yesterday. You guys can check out that video for all the differences. We are just gonna focus on performance. So we have the same spec systems, but this year, it's actually $600 cheaper for the highest end 16 inch as far as performance compared to just a week ago, which cost $4,100. We're gonna test CPU and GPU performance, multiple photo editing applications, video editing with DaVinci Resolve, Xcode, Logic, Blender, and much more. And on top of that, we are unplugging these machines. Both of them are at 100%, so we are gonna look at the battery life with heavy use. You guys can see how excited I am. Let's start out with a very simple one, but something everybody wants to know about, Geekbench 5. We have eight high performance cores from the M1 Max, along with eight from the Intel Core i9, both with our recommended 32 gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and see the results. As these tests are running, I have to tell you about our giveaway. We're giving away a $2,500 M1 Pro MacBook Pro, and all you have to do is be subscribed and comment below with these launch week videos. At the end of the week, we're gonna choose one video and then one random comment, and I don't care if you are somewhere outside of the United States, if I have to ship it to you, pay import fees, whatever, it is we are gonna get one of these beautiful machines in your hands we also just got the razor blade advanced with the RTX 3080 and the latest i9 processor this beast has 16 gigabytes of video memory along with the 32 gigs of regular RAM one terabyte SSD and it costs three thousand four hundred dollars with that 4k OLED display so make sure you guys have those notifications enabled so you guys don't miss out on this comparison against the M1 Max. The scores are in and we have 62% better single core performance and 76 on the multi-core. Really big improvements even against the eight core i9. Now that single core, that really helps for simple tasks. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up speedometer 2.0. This tests web browsing performance and the M1 systems are insanely quick. Wow, we have 271. We've never seen a score this high. The best was the M1 at 220 compared to 152. That's about 80% faster performance for web browsing and of course other tasks. Now let's go ahead and jump back to Geekbench and now we're gonna switch over to the graphics. As you guys know, this system has that 5600M which is the best that you can get. It was an $800 upgrade compared to the 32 core M1 Max. Let's see what we get for our compute score. All right, guys, the scores are in and we have 42,800 compared to 69,478. That is 62% faster, but as we already know, Geekbench is actually not using this GPU to its full capacity. So the score is actually higher than this. We are gonna open up GFX Bench Metal. This is optimized metal performance for gaming. I'm running the off-screen test here because this new MacBook has a much higher dis resolution display, almost 4K. And as we run this, I wanna do something that's very interesting. I'm using this terminal command to see how much wattage this M1 Max uses. Let's hit start there. All right, guys, our scores are in, and this is a bigger difference than I expected. With the Intel and the AMD 5600M, this was the first laptop that we're like, guys, you can actually play games with this graphics card. It was incredible. And it got 129 frames per second compared to 309 for the M1 Max. That is 2.4 times better performance. So you guys see the difference here, whereas Geekbench wasn't that big of a difference. And we're gonna continue on with real world graphics tests in just a bit. I also wanna note these fans. You guys probably don't hear it, but this thing, after it's been done for over a minute, it's still trying to cool down. The fans are spinning where with the M1 Pro Max, the M1 Max should be called the Pro Max, right? <laughs> <laughs> with this one, the fans were silent the whole time. Now with that said, let's look at our wattage. Obviously this thing had its fans blaring and I'm shocked to see that it used 71.85, basically 72 watts of power. Uh, previously, I never saw it go above 55, so I don't know if Apple made it, you know, have more power with more wattage, I'm not sure. But this is crazy. 
And nobody's mentioned this before, but the M1 Max uses 40 watts of power under full load with 32 cores. So the difference is almost double, basically over 80% more power that's required for the 5600M, even though for gaming loads at least, uh, the, the Max, the M1 Max here, gets 2.4 times better frames per second. So that's a huge difference in performance and power needed. The next thing I wanna test is Blackmagic raw speed test, not disk speed test. This tests how well the CPUs and graphics can decode Blackmagic raw codecs. And look at this, the Intel CPU actually decodes at 48 frames per second. Uh, compared to 29, so the M1 Max is not decoding as well, but the graphics, guys, 25 frames per second for the 5600M for 8K, compared to 199, almost 200. We will do an actual Blackmagic RAW test in DaVinci Resolve in just a bit. The next thing that I wanna test are the SSDs. Both of these are one terabyte models. We have almost 5,900 on the right, and 5,300 read compared to 2,800 and 2,700. That's pretty much double the speed for read and over double for write. Definitely a great improvement. And now let's go ahead and compare 3D rendering performance with Cinebench R23 as well as fans, heat, and noise, all of that stuff. I'm gonna start out our 10 minute stress test and we're gonna also see the frequencies and any thermal throttling that we have. Bam, right away we got almost 89 watts for this eight core i9 processor. And almost instantly the temperatures are over 90 degrees Celsius and we're cruising at 3.4 gigahertz. Our M1 Max is running at 28 watts of CPU power compared to currently 65 for the i9. All right guys, we have about 30 seconds left and man, there are a lot of differences. First, let's take a look at the thermal camera. 43 degrees on the M1 Max. You guys can see those hot spots where the vents allow the air to escape. And we have 45 on our i9 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now look at the fans right here. On the i9, they're maxed out. They have been since a minute into the test. Whereas with the M1 Max, they are barely above idle. The machine is still silent after 10 minutes of running this test. Now our i9, it actually is throttling to 55 watts from 68 where it started, and that's because it just got too hot, and we're thermal throttled down to what, 3.0, 2.99 gigahertz, definitely way too much heat with this system. All right guys, the test is done, and man, this is crazy. Even with the i9, the score is 8,105 compared to 12,129. This thing is pretty much as powerful, or almost as powerful as my insane $15,000 Mac Pro, while using less than 30 watts, just under it, compared to 68 until this thing kept throttling and throttling and throttling. So we have basically 50% better performance with 2.2 times less power usage, and the fans were silent the whole time, compared to max speed, even a couple minutes after, the fans are still maxed out trying to cool this thing down. The M1 Max chip and those, the 10 cores there, they're absolutely insane. And now let's move on to Xcode for all of you programmers out there. How does a new system compare to the previous best laptop? Thank you to Max Aramenko for creating this benchmark and making this terminal command for us that automatically launches Xcode and compiles this code. All right guys, this is an insane speed right here. First off, the eight core i9 took 197 seconds compared to 93 seconds with the M1 Max chip. That is just an incredible score, over two times faster, 2.12 times faster, and that is only three seconds behind the best score ever for Xcode, which was a 28 core Xeon in a Mac Pro. I think that's what, like over 20 grand, Vadim? Yeah. For that system, and this is a laptop. That is absolutely insane Xcode performance for all of you programmers. 
this is a beast. And now we are testing out logic. We've done some tests ahead of time to save you guys time. We don't make want to make another 40 minute video again. And it looks like the i9 can handle 98 tracks in logic with the new logic benchmark without crashing compared to 155 tracks with our M1 Max chip. And if you're somebody who uses logic, just go and get the M1 Pro. You actually get no better performance. If you don't need the graphics, don't spend the extra money. Now the other difference is the fans here are at pretty much a full blast right now compared to idle. Literally, we ran this many, many times, the fans were completely off. Now they barely spun up on one side. So for logic, if you're doing audio production, you don't want that fan noise, right? That's where this thing really comes in. And next, we are gonna be testing Blender. You guys asked for it. I'm gonna use two tests, one CPU and one GPU base. So we have this party tug scene downloaded. You can download it and test it for yourself from their website. I'm gonna go ahead and select render right here and we're gonna do our GPU test. Wow, the M1 Max just killed it. 5.9 seconds? under six seconds that is incredible it was almost instant we're still waiting here all right guys the 5600m 40 core graphics are finished and it took 33 and a half seconds that's 5.7 times longer now if you guys remember in our metal test it wasn't even twice the performance but when we're using an optimized program and blender is optimized for apple silicon you guys see the difference. 5.9 seconds under six compared to 33 and a half. For Blender, guys, this is crazy. And the fans were pretty much off compared to just blaring and taking a while to cool down. Now I'm also gonna run the Splash Fox test. A lot more people test this. And this one is actually only using the CPU. It's not using the GPU. We have a lot less differences with the uh, CPUs between these two machines. But let's go ahead and hit run. All right guys, this time we have a smaller difference, but it's still there. We have 20 seconds for the M1 Max with its eight performance cores and two efficiency cores that don't do much compared to 31 seconds for the eight core i9, the best Intel processor in any uh, MacBook Pro. Those results line up with Cinebench, basically 50% faster CPU performance for rendering. And once again, for Blender and other 3D rendering programs, this is a pretty massive jump. Next, we are testing Affinity Photo. You guys asked for it, I went out and I bought it. We're running their built-in benchmark, which makes it nice and easy to see a wide range of performance with Affinity. So let's go ahead and get started. And then we'll jump into Photoshop and Lightroom as well. These benchmarks are just not stopping at all. So <laughs> we're gonna keep going, give you guys all the results. All right guys, the scores are in and this is pretty crazy. I'll zoom in and let you guys see both of them here. I'm just gonna comment on the combined scores, but you guys can see all the singles for yourself. As far as the multi-CPU, we get 37% faster performance with the M1 Max, the 10 core, and the Pro would be the same. But for the graphics, we have 4.6 times faster performance um, with that graphics compared to the 5600M. That's a crazy difference because uh, like in Metal, like in Geekbench, you guys saw the difference wasn't anywhere near that, not even double. So if you're using Affinity with all their awesome optimized graphics acceleration, the results are, well, you guys see for yourselves. We keep just having crazy differences. Next, we are jumping into Photoshop. I have a few different tests for you guys to see the performance difference. The first thing is gonna be an HDR test. I have nine 42 megapixel raw images. Let's go ahead and hit merge to HDR. We're gonna see how long this takes. The CPUs are maxed out. Man, this is a slow process. I don't know how you guys do it. You have to switch to Affinity because the CPUs are not even being hit hard. They maxed out and they stopped. Wow, okay, so it looks like the Intel was first there. We still have to have it create the final file. And then here, looks like it's still merging it and creating a better quality. Bam, that finally finished. On the Intel, we're still going on the M1 Max chip, but it's weird because the CPU is only sitting at 21%. And when we tested the 14 inch in Lightroom, it was way faster than Intel's, but I guess we'll wait. Bam, okay, now it finally got finished. 
That was very weird, but Die 9 took 2 minutes and 24 seconds compared to 3 minutes and 48 seconds. We'll have to try that again in Lightroom. Maybe Camera Raw isn't running properly. I'm not sure. The next thing I'm going to test is super resolution. I'm going to go ahead and hit this enhance button and we'll run enhance right here as well. That took 32 seconds with the M1 Max and 38 with the i9 once again. Very close results there, the M11, but not by as much as in Lightroom. So there we go, let's go ahead and just close this. Now let's jump into Lightroom and see, maybe it's more optimized for Apple Silicon than Photoshop. I'm gonna hit HDR with the same exact files. The preview is already being made here. Bam, now it's creating the final HDR file. These things are actually really close for this. Bam, the M1 is done. Let's wait for the Intel. And bam, right there, the Intel machine is done. That took three minutes and 19 seconds compared to two minutes and four seconds. So about a third faster for the M1 Max. And the same thing goes for the M1 Pro because it's mostly CPU based task when you're doing this HDR. And now let's go ahead and enhance both of these. I'm gonna hit this button to get started right away. All right, both of them are done. This thing just finished. It's beach balling, I already hit the timer. We have a minute and 30 seconds for the eight core i9 MacBook and we have 47 seconds for our M1 Max Apple Silicon 16 inch. That means that the new MacBook is almost twice as fast if you're doing this in Adobe Lightroom Classic. So if you're doing these tasks, do it here. It does look like it's optimized for Apple Silicon and maybe Photoshop or at least Adobe Camera Raw isn't yet. And now we're gonna launch 50 high resolution edited files here. As far as the program, even the Core i9 was the best of the best, super smooth, no issues. But what happens when we go to export these? Now before we run this export, I have to show you guys the battery life because we need to plug this machine in. We just got a low power rating and it is at 3% battery life remaining. We've been doing this for a couple hours, running these and a couple hours is all last with such high CPU and GPU wattage. Now take a guess what our M1 Max 16 inch is at. You guys can comment down below. Let's go ahead and take a look and bam, 49% basically 50, showing us that literally it sucks half the power, even as a much higher resolution display that's mini LED compared to the Intel version. So you can get four hours of pushing this machine to its limits and it'll still perform great, even though its graphics does use a lot more power than the M1 Pro chip. Bam, we are done with the 16 inch M1 Max chip. And with the i9, look at that. We are not even at 50%, almost right there. So let's go ahead and wait. And bam, we are done with the i9. That took three minutes and five seconds with that machine. Still really fast. That was really good results. It was worth spending 4,100 on this laptop. But now for 3,500, $600 less, it did it in a minute and 21 seconds, guys. That is 2.3 times faster. So yeah, more than twice as fast. That really shows the advantage of unified memory when you have a program that is optimized because our CPU performance was only 50% faster and that's mostly what it's using right now. But obviously it did this in you know twice as fast. So that just shows you what the M1 chip can do with all those optimizations. All right guys, let's go ahead and close Lightroom Classic. And now finally, let's get into video editing. We're gonna use Final Cut Pro and then switch over to DaVinci Resolve. The first test I have is gonna be interesting. This is something brand new. This is using Final Cut's new tracker. I'm gonna grab my color board for grading. I'm gonna select Noah right here. I'll do it on the M1 system as well. And then we're gonna hit analyze at the same time. Bam, oh my goodness, is that even going? Look at that on the M1, bam, it is done. And the Intel, it only got started once the M1 was completely done, the M1 Max. Bam, it is complete. All right guys, so that was an 18 second clip. It took 31 seconds with the i9, 5600M, basically twice as long. The M1 Max 
took six seconds to analyze that clip. It is using that machine learning that is incredible. Now we all know that ProRes and ProRes RAW edits really nicely in Final Cut. You guys can see right here, neither systems have any issues. But what I'm gonna do is go over to 8K. So basically this is a 8K timeline that has stacks of this footage because they don't actually have 8K footage, but this is the same thing. Both actually play back surprisingly well. It's a lot easier for the M1 Max model to do it. And what we're gonna do is we are going to export this one minute project. It's not five minutes like before. Bam, we are exporting and we'll see how these do. Jeez, right away, the M1 Max is at 38% now, 40 compared to seven. So it is just flying through this export. And I think this is actually faster than my $15,000 Mac Pro that has that afterburner card when I was testing it. That is crazy. All right, wow, I was not expecting that big of a difference. We have three minutes and 55 seconds for a one minute timeline to export this 8K ProRes RAW compared to 37 seconds. That is six and a half times faster. Basically, if you had a 10 minute project, it would take pretty much 40 minutes on this one compared to six minutes or so on this machine. That is incredible. And now we are in DaVinci Resolve. We are gonna start out by testing stabilization, which uses all the graphics horsepower. This is a one minute 4K clip to stabilize. Let's hit that and hit our timer. Right away, the M1 Max is flying. The 5600M took 46 seconds compared to 28. So definitely a big improvement. Next, I'm gonna export a five minute HEVC timeline that is color graded. And we didn't do a simple project that mo most people do in Final Cut. So I'm gonna do it here. Let's hit render and see how they do. Look at that, the M1 Max is exporting at 92 frames per second compared to 45. Now, neither of these machines graphics are being maxed out. We're not limited by the CPU or the GPU or the RAM, just the encoders. And of course the M1 Max has new encoders that are way faster. All right guys, we have our results and the 5600M with i9 took two minutes and 39 seconds compared to one minute and 19 seconds, literally twice as fast with the new machine. So you're just flying through exports with this thing. Now I promised you guys some Black Magic Raw. Here is some 6K Black Magic Raw from the Pocket 6K. Looks like both of them are playing it back really easily. Um, no issues whatsoever. They're both very high-end machines and this codec is nice and efficient. This is one area where the M1 chip does suffer once you add multiple LUTs that I have right here, but with the M1 Max, no issues, and I suspect the M1 Pro also plays this back perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and export this. In this case, I'm going out to ProRes 422, and let's take a look at that. Wow, 100 frames per second for this 6K exporting compared to 49 here. Oh no, the i9 slowed down to 32 or 30 frames per second now because of thermal throttling. The fans are going full blast, 29 now. Bam, the M1 Max is done and this thing is still going now at 26 frames per second. That's crazy, it started out at 49. Wow. All right, bam, we are finally done. That is a much bigger difference than I expected. That took over four minutes, four minutes and five seconds for the Intel system compared to one minute and 13 seconds. This thing was completely silent once again. That is over three times faster, almost four times faster. That's incredible. That's like, what, a 20 minute video that's Blackmagic Raw literally exporting in under five minutes? That is insane. Uh, compared to a 20 minute video taking, I don't know, what is that? Let me do the math. I'm terrible at doing the math. An hour and a half or something like that? I don't know, that's crazy. You guys tell me, 
down below. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed me putting these machines through torture testing and benchmarking in real life scenarios. Let me know, do you think it's worth buying and upgrading to an M1 Max for $600 cheaper than the highest end configuration last year? Um, I think so. Not only is the performance way better, it runs way quieter and cooler. And with that, it also saves you 600 bucks. So the battery life is absolutely crazy. You guys saw that it was basically at 50% when this one died. At this point, we're still at 18% after bunch more tests and downloads and setting up between shooting. It is just absolutely crazy. Now, if you guys wanna win a $2,500 M1 Pro MacBook, make sure you guys are subscribed, you guys comment below on this video and check out the other videos that we already posted and that are coming out later this week. Like that comparison to the Razer one uh, or our RAM comparison between 16 and 32 gigs or 32 and 64. That gives you more chances. The more you comment between four, different videos it helps your chances so go and check that out make sure you guys are subscribed of course i am just way too tired after shooting so many of these videos but we have more exciting ones to come and if you made it this far if you haven't yet checked out our merch we have a bunch of cool shirts like this limited scribble shirt uh, this is going away after this week you can use the code m1 pro to save 20 percent off the links are down in the video description Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I will see you in the next video.